darkness. Most of us are scared of it. Whether it's the darkness outside our door at night, or the darkness inside of us, the part of us we'd rather hide. Are we brave enough to face the darkness? Carl Jung said, people do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own souls. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Rembrandt makes the darkness conscious. He doesn't run from it, he faces it. His language was darkness and light. He was the master of chiaroscuro, constantly experimenting with strong contrasts between light and dark. This self-portrait is famous for the way Rembrandt's spotlit face stands out from the darkness. Whilst the light is remarkable, it crucially relies on the darkness surrounding it to make its impact. What fascinates me most about Rembrandt is the brilliance that emerges from the darkness in his own life. I first experienced this brilliance four years ago on a family trip to the Netherlands. Whilst wandering the streets of Amsterdam, we stumbled across the Rembrandt house. I stepped from the cold, cobbled streets into the warmth of the quirky 17th century building that was both his home and studio. I ventured from the formal reception rooms downstairs, where the artist negotiated the sale of his paintings, to a complex of creaking staircases and hidden wooden cavities. The dingy and musty interior of these fairy tale spaces lit only by candlelight. Already I was glimpsing a darker facet to the renown of this famous painter of the Dutch Golden Age. Yet still, his studio on the upper floor was light and spacious. I remember inhaling the bitter smell of linseed oil as I stood in the shadow of his vast easel. I felt in my hands the raw pigments he would have used, some smooth, some rough and crumbling under my touch. I marvelled at the electric blues and yellows standing out from the earth tones that ground his paintings. Leaving Rembrandt's house, my thoughts and senses were lit up by his genius and the incredible possibilities of expressing oneself through the shades and tones of art. We can trace in Rembrandt's self-portraits the progression of his self-awareness and expression. At the outset of his career, in Self-Portrait in a Georget, Rembrandt emerges from the half-shadow, soft hair framing the lucidity of his youthful face. A glimmer of light bounces off the hard steel of his shoulder. This single piece of armour, borrowed from a more formal portrait style, highlighting how his talent lies not in military prowess, but in the brilliance of his brushstrokes. Rembrandt moves towards more contemplative portraiture in middle age. In his self-portrait of 1640, here in the National Gallery, his self-assured pose and elaborate 16th century dress are commonly perceived as expressions of confidence at the height of his career. Rembrandt deliberately points towards the old masters of the previous century, referencing Titian's A Man with a Quilted Sleeve and Raphael's portrait of Baldassare Castiglione. Titian asserts the authority of his subject by the way in which the figure commands the space, with his arm resting at ease on the stone wall. Rembrandt places himself in a similar stance, yet his jaded look replaces the mistrusting demeanour of Titian's subject. He stands out from the shadows with a look of knowing introspection. He had by now endured devastation in his personal life, each of his first three children having died within months of their births. Suffering and loss had made their mark on him. He bears a melancholic countenance, with almost sickly pale skin and distant reddened eyes. With Rembrandt's flowing brushstrokes and tonal blending echoing the textural painting of Raphael, perhaps the sentiment evoked in Rembrandt's self-portrait is a comment on the philosophy of Raphael's subject, the author Castiglione.
Castiglione's ideal of the perfect courtier is encompassed in the term sprezzatura, a form of defensive irony in which it is important to disguise one's true feelings behind a mask of apparent reticence and nonchalance. Yet Rembrandt doesn't put a smokescreen in front of his troubles by means of a superficial portrayal. He puts himself in plain light, his emotion undisguised. He presents himself on an entirely human level, allowing us to relate to the brokenness of his own experience in a very real and powerful way. It is poignantly evident that Rembrandt does not live up to the popular portrait styles of other artists in order to live up to society's expectations, but is instead drawing on past genres to express the depths of his thoughts and feelings. Rembrandt's self-portrait at the age of 63 takes us to the last year of his life and is the penultimate of nearly a hundred self-portraits painted over his lifetime. The frail man before us contemplates his prodigal life. Two scandalous relationships following the death of his wife, Saskia, and the financial bankruptcy that came from living beyond his means. On first glance, this painting is pleasing and gentle to the eye, a warm blend of muddy browns lifted by the luxurious reddish hues of the velvety fabrics. However, as we are drawn to the centre of the piece, the stark white light brings full focus onto the subject's face. His spotlit forehead standing out from the soft, smudged browns of his garments and surroundings. His use of the impasto technique, described later as the school of rough, builds here from the thinner paint of the darker outer to the thicker paint of the lighter inner. This creates a three-dimensional illusion, with the shadows under the nose and chin projecting the facial features forward even further. As we trace the faint outline of his figure, it emerges slowly from his darkened surroundings until it feels like we're standing right up close to him. Through his fine brushstrokes, Rembrandt accentuates numerous small details which give the portrait texture. From his wisps of silvery hair to the glistening shine on his nose and forehead, with his face almost fluorescently illuminated, the rosy patches in his nose and cheeks bring a subtle warmth and life to the face of the man before us. But this remarkable face is far from beautiful. The honesty of its depiction is fitting with historian Simon Sharma's appraisal that Rembrandt enjoyed reading the marks left by worldly experience, the pits and pox, the red-rimmed eyes and scabby skin, which gave the human countenance a mottled richness. The darkness of his eyes draws us in. We search for the emotion that Rembrandt might be feeling. Is he looking upon us impassively? Or is he pushing back his deep despair beneath the surface? We sense that this is a man weary with the strains of life. His skin sagging and his hair grey. It's as though we can almost hear him sigh under the weight of his troubles. As though he might just be pulled back down into the darkness that surrounds him. Every time I meet Rembrandt's eyes afresh, I experience something new. The ambiguity of his facial expression draws something out of us. As we exchange glances with him, our hidden feelings are brought to the surface. Will we push our disquiet, our darkness back down inside, or are we brave enough to put them into the spotlight? The feelings evoked in these pieces reflect his changing fortunes and outlook, but characteristic in all of them is his honesty about the impact of human experience, giving his work its universal and lasting appeal. Although painted nearly 30 years down the line, Rembrandt's self-portrait at the age of 63 faces his younger self. He reflects upon his own experience and the reality that financial success now eludes him. He died a poor man, simply a number in a graveyard. But despite his pitiful demise, I would argue that it's against the darkness of his human failings that the brilliance of his legacy stands out. Light. Rembrandt shows us that it's as we bring our darkness into the light that we create something beautiful out of the brokenness. 
indeed the courage of these self-portraits and so many of his other paintings, is that he is an artist who is willing to bear his own soul. He takes the risk of bringing his own darkness into the light to show that it is possible for us to face our own souls and leave a lasting mark on the world. This is a risk I hope I am willing to take. Are you?